Welcome to Backstage with Richard Ridge. Donna Summer remains one of the greatest musical icons of all time. And now Summer, the Donna Summer musical, is returning to the road this November. And my guests are the exciting new Donnas. So please say hello to Brittany Smith, who is Diva Donna, Karis Gulledge as Disco Donna, and Amari Edward Jones as Hi. Duckling Donna. <laughs> hey, ladies. Hey. 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 Oh my God, this is so exciting. First off, how are you all and where are you all? Karis, I'll start with you. I am great. I'm so excited. My cheeks are hurting because I keep smiling so much. Um, and currently I am in Massachusetts. Okay, beautiful. And how you doing? Everything is good? I'm great. I'm feeling good. Everything's going well. I love it. Now, Brittany, you look like you're in a dressing room. Where are you? Yes, I'm so glad you said that. This is actually my classroom. <laughs> um, I am in Washington, D.C. right now, and I have a bunch of arts kids that um, I teach. And um, yeah, so I, I've set up my room this way um, to kind of look a little bit like a theater. Um, and they love it. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that you think it looks like a, a dressing room. <laughs> I said, she's already on the road already. I said, Mission accomplished. <laughs> Amari, how are you and where are you? I'm doing well. I'm in Suffolk, Virginia. Okay, great. Everyone's got smiles on their face. Listen, yes. how excited <laughs> are the three of you getting ready to hit the road as Donna Summer? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, I'll start so with you. Go Brittany, I'll start with you. Okay. Um, yes, we are so excited. As you can tell, we're all like all over the place right now. Um, and I think I just share, um, I think we all share the same sentiment. And not only are we so excited to get on the road and to um, be a part of this amazing show, but you know, in the era that we're in right now, it's so great to be able to just get back to doing what yeah, we yeah. love for a change, you know? Um, we've been without theater for over a year now, so I think I speak for so many artists and creatives when I say like, yay, like we're just <laughs> so excited, so very ready to go. Karis, what about you? I am just through the roof. Uh, <laughs> this is my first tour ever, and so I'm, I'm very pumped and I'm I'm so grateful that I get to not only do a tour and get to see all these parts of the country, but also get to honor a legend in the process. So <laughs> it's a it's a really a dream come true. As cliche as that sounds, it's a dream come true. <laughs> Ari, for you. I'm excited as well. This is my first tour. And what I'm really excited about is for people my age to learn about Donna Summer, because a lot of people I know don't really know about her. So I want them to come to the theater and learn about her. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. When were you each first aware of Donna Summer? Do you remember like that first song you heard or you were like, oh my God, she is the coolest? Okay. Anybody I, can go first. Okay, I have a story. So about a couple of years back, I'm a really big Beyonce fan. And Beyonce's Naughty Girl, she samples mm -hmm. Love to Love You Baby by Donna Summer. Mm -hmm. She and so have. I was listening to the song and I looked it up and I saw that and that's when I got into Donna Summer from that song. Okay. That's so cool. Um, I'll, I'll go next. Um, <laughs> I grew up, my, my father is a musician, a professional musician. And so he grew, um, I grew up listening a lot to a lot of R&B, funk, soul, and hearing that played around the house every weekend. And he played Last Dance all the time because that was something that he played on bass all the time. Um, and then beyond that, I also grew up listening to her on my own and just loving her. And I recognized it in Naughty Girl as well. Funny enough, I grew up watching this show called Family Matters as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> she made an appearance on Family Matters growing up. She played Aunt Una. And then at the end of the episode, she sang Last Dance. And my mom, we watched it the other day, and she was like, you used to cackle at her singing this when you were a kid. So it's crazy that I, I get to like do this now and, and get to watch and, and learn and, and be. <laughs> That's great. Brittany, for you. For me, um, I kind of echo a little bit of what Kara shared. I grew up listening to um, funk and soul and R&B and specifically Motown around my house, right? That's kind of like what, what we did on Saturday mornings. Your mom put on yeah. whatever and you cleaned up the house, 
right? So um, I grew up listening to all of that. So I was aware of Donna Summer just from that, from the playlist growing up. But not only that, um, I'm a Texas girl. I'm born in Houston. And my little short anecdote there is I grew up kind of a big fan of Selena, right? And um, oddly enough, Selena was the biggest Donna Summer fan. She shared it in all her interviews. And of course, I was pretty young when Selena was um, actively working and, uh, you know, a major name. But I remember her saying a lot how much she was a fan of Donna Summer. She even had a disco set in her shows. Um, and just tying that together to now, oddly enough, this is Hispanic Heritage Month. And I, of course, am teaching fine arts. And so I am teaching them about Selena this week. Every week we tackle a new Hispanic um, or Latin American artist. We've been learning about Selena and I've been playing a lot of her performance from the Astrodome, uh, which was her very last performance before she unfortunately passed. And um, she did her disco set. So yeah. I you know, connected then and, and now to, uh, to Donna Summer and her work. Do your kids know that you're hitting the road as Donna Summer? Not yet. I haven't broken it. <laughs> the, the people that, the powers that be, no, but, you know, they think I'm famous, which is so funny. You know, they just think I'm famous because they've seen pictures around of me doing stuff. And then other teachers are like, well, Miss Smith used to do this and she's done that and all that cool stuff. So I kind of like to be a little, little in up celebrity, but I'll break the news to them um, soon. Oh, I see a whole <laughs> disco medley happening at school with your kids before you hit the road. Oh, for sure. They are preparing, <laughs> they are preparing um, for a performance on Friday anyway. So oh, good. Yeah, I'm all about it. <laughs> That's great. Now, I want to hear about each of your final callback for the roles of Donna and how you got the call. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. <laughs> okay. okay, so this past summer, I was working at an amusement park in Indiana. And it was July 26th was my birthday. My callback was July 27th. So I went in. First of all, I did not know that I needed three headshots and resumes. I bought one. So I'm all unprepared. But I was like, okay, I just got to go in the room and show them what I have because that's what it's about. So I went in, I had a great time. And then I got called back in to sing and do the sides. And then I got an email to come back the next day. And I did everything over again. And then in the room was the whole production team. And that's when they told me, they brought me in by myself and they told me, so yeah. <laughs> Were you able to tell anybody or they said, keep it under wraps? I just told my parents, <laughs> but other than that, yes. Oh my gosh, Brittany, for you. For me, um, I was actually there with Amari in the, during the finals. Um, and my final callback story was I was actually in Texas this summer visiting family and um, all that good stuff. And so I had flown to New York for the finals. I knew that I made it all the way to the final calls. And I went in there. And of course, there's already a little um, tension because of all the COVID procedures and all of that that's happening. And so um, how it ties in quickly, I'm going to talk about you cares is um, I already knew just like I already knew that disco um, that Karis was disco down right I already knew that and so I made a point to like meet her I saw her like hey girl say it. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I didn't say it but anywho long story short um, kind of the same thing got a called in to sing and to dance and there was this back and forth and back and forth and I, and I distinctly remember at the very end um, you know it's like okay great everybody's wonderful you guys are all good to go but Brittany and another person they said you two stay and I remember thinking what else do they want from us <laughs> you've seen us all you know we were like oh gosh by this time you're tired right yeah. um and so that is when we kind of went in back in the room and I was with Amari and that same group of people that got the offer there um which was very cool they kind of did it right there and you're like oh snap okay right now so um, I called my mom and all that good stuff. <laughs> I love it. Karis, for you. Um, so I flew up for the last two days of the callbacks. And when I got there, um, I was, everything was just boom, 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 because I was actually working on contract right before the callback. So I was doing a show, going to callbacks, back in town for another show the next day. <laughs> so I flew up and then I got there and then they were like, we want to see you dance, Karis. Let's let's see you dance. And so I went in and I did the the dance call, the hot stuff choreo. And I just, I had the time of my life. <laughs> like I just had a wonderful time standing there sweating buckets, but having a wonderful time. 
And then they asked me to come back the following day to sing a couple of songs and to read a bit um, with a few people. And then we also had like mini interviews um, before the final let us let us know because they had a few people have interviews on um, and oh. they, they were just asking like, how would you feel if, if you got this role? What would that mean to you? What's your favorite Donna Summer song? And um, so I got to answer a lot of those questions. And then um, I read a little more for more of the callbacks. And then um, right when I was about to leave, I was like, ready. <laughs> and then um, Will stopped me, um, Will Prather. He stopped me and he said, okay, well, before you leave Karis, we just want to just want to talk to you a little bit, learn a little bit more about you. And I, so he asked me a couple questions and I told him my answers. And then he was like, how would you feel to, uh, how would it feel if you got to play Disco Donna? And I was like, yes, we <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my whole experience. And it was, and that was all that could come out of my mouth was, yes, please. <laughs> and so, yeah, that was my experience. Oh my, okay, so what was that final song you each sang? Do you remember that final song you had to do with the audition? Yes. Okay. I sang um, both, I sang two. I sang MacArthur's Park and Last Dance. Oh. All right, Brittany. <laughs> two good ones. Um, I actually sang um, a song called Friends Unknown. That was my last song. Um, it's this kind of power ballad and it is a beast <laughs> to say the least vocally. And I actually had to sing that a few times that day. And I was like, oh my goodness. But um, it, it is, it's a wonderful song. So sing that one. Amari, for you, your final song, you had to sing for your final callback. Mine was On My Honor. And I had sung it the day before, but singing it at that time, I was like, I feel like I just left everything out there. I love this. So I know rehearsals haven't officially started yet, but you sort of met each other. Was it on like yes. StreamYard or Zoom to meet in person? Like, how did you all get together? Okay, so um, funny. I know that as the cast had been being formed, of course, you know, as actors, you know, we don't know a bunch of stuff, but, you know, um, we start to get emails, of course, right? As far as, <laughs> that is, as, far as, hey, we are, hey, you know, this is the cast, here's information, all that stuff, the formalities. Um, and, and so I think that I, again, speak for a lot of artists when I say you kind of see the names in the in the email, like, ooh, Oh, I don't know her or I don't. If you know, you know, you kind of start to look people up, right? So I know a lot of people were kind of looking each other up and starting mm -hmm. to make social media connections um, in that way, just kind of going, oh, I remember this person. Oh, hey, so happy to be here with you. So um, I know that was kind of how a lot of us, you know, initially connected by um, finding each other on social media. <laughs> yes. All right. So that's sort of how you all met on social media? I think that's how we became a little bit more acquainted with mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. Okay, now I want to talk about touring, because like I said, some of you said you've never toured before, but Brittany, you've toured before, right? Yes, um, okay. I have toured before. Now, have you offered the other ladies like touring advice, like what to pack, <laughs> what not to pack? I mean, have you, yes. have you discussed this yet? Tell us, <laughs> yes. Actually, yes, and I'm like so happy. To, I'm actually more excited for them. I was shared, I think, with both of them at different times that I actually love touring with first timers because yeah you get to really see from the lens of someone that's getting to experience this sector of performing for the first time. And it's so beautiful to, to watch that, that coming of age and watch people like really go like, wow, really explore the, um, the country or the world um, and, and what they take from it, you know? And so as somebody that has toured before, um, you kind of start to see it through a new lens. And um, so just quickly, no, I've shared a few little things with Karis and Amari about like tour life or whatever. And I'm like, Hey, I'm an open book. Ask me whatever you want to. I, it's, it's all good. But Amari specifically, recently we had a conversation. She's like, what do, she said, actually the question was, so how many pair of jeans do you have? <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So I kind of make this rundown of, I guess, how I pack for tours. So we've kind of started the, the conversation, but I think we're going to be all good. All right. So Amari, so it was jeans for you, right? That was like, yes. that's the jeans, can I bring <laughs> Did I pack for this tour? Yes, I was really <laughs> contemplating because I knew I was going to have workout clothes and I know I wanted to be comfy on the bus and I just really didn't know. <laughs> well, for you, like, what were your questions about? What should I pack? Should I bring my whole apartment? What should I bring? 
Oh my goodness. So my question wasn't so much about like packing as it was about how do you handle going from climate to climate? That was like my biggest question because like, um, you know, sometimes from what I've heard and what Brittany's told me, like sometimes it goes from a hotter climate and you're back in the snow, like a, like a, within the week, you know? So that was the, the biggest question that I had was like, how do you do that? And then also what, what are your tips and tricks of like staying well? And then also I'm a huge foodie. I think that was the main point that we all connected with as well. Um, we're all three of us are like, Food where? Give it to us. <laughs> so one of the biggest things was I was like, I'm excited to know like the food places. And then Brittany was already giving me recommendations for different towns and stuff and places that she's tried. So I'm super excited about that. <laughs> okay. Is there a go-to item from your home or whatever that you said, I have to bring with me? It could be a stuffed animal. I mean, is there something from your home that you're like, it's going in the trunk. It's going everywhere with me on this tour. Oh my gosh. Brittany, because you've done this before. Like, what's your go-to? Is it your theatrical lighting that travels? What do you bring? <laughs> that would be amazing, right? <laughs> your ring lights and, no, um, no, I actually, it's not going to be as spectacular as you think. Um, it's two things, if I could just cheat a little bit. One is like my little portable steamer, right? It's a lot of self-care stuff, if, if you know, yeah. honestly. Um, one is my portable steamer because obviously, like Kara's touched on, you're going to be in different climates and specifically with this show, um, the Donnas have vocally demanding roles. And so it's important to just stay healthy, right? And so keeping, you know, those cords moist and all that. So my portable steamer, and then I have this kind of travel diffuser um, just to zen out in my room, right? Because you have these long days sometimes and just to kind of have that self-care aspect. And so it's like a little diffuser with like my little essential oils. So the room is all, you know zen and whatnot and so <laughs> those, are, those are go to though for like self-care but is there a personal item is there a stuffed animal or something a book or a picture or something like it goes with me everywhere oh my gosh i don't th you know i don't think so <laughs> i sh i really i really should get one though i'm like so i'm bringing my makeup i'm bringing yeah. my phone i'm bringing my you know what i mean my self-care stuff um, but I, in my travels, I've kind of learned to, I think I used to be that way, right? Like I, I, I want to bring this, I want to bring that, yeah. um, because it has to go with me. It gives me a piece of home. But then over time, when you start to lug stuff around and things get heavier, you just kind of get accustomed to like, you know what? Efficiency at this point. <laughs> so I'm kind of an efficient packer. Um, and then technology, of course. So to kind of get that piece of home, I'm FaceTiming people and like no, I love that because a lot yeah. of people say I pack really light, but someone's like, I have these cooking pots that I love. And yeah. they're like, I'm bringing my set of pots, which will weigh down my trunk. But it's like one pair of jeans, a suit, and my cooking pots. No, but you've done it right because you're going to pick up all this stuff in every city you go to anyway. Yeah. All right, Karis, things you have to bring with you. Um, I have I have a few pictures of family and really close friends and my fiance that I take with me. That's and then also my my journal, my grateful journal. I write in that every day, and um, I make it. It's a part of my everyday routine. It's actually in my backpack, but <laughs> I write in her every single day, so I always have that. That's great. Now, Amari, besides your twenty-two pairs of jeans, what else are you packing? <laughs> okay, I have to have a picture of my parents. Yeah, always with me, and I have this pink blanket that I've had since I was younger, and I just love to have that. So. <laughs> So, I mean, I looked at the tour. I mean, only I, I, there's so many cities you're going to one after another. Is there a city you're looking forward to the most? Like, Brittany, you've done this before. So is there a go-to city like you're going back to a hometown or something? Or like, where's your go-to city? Like, I'm so glad it's on the itinerary. Um, a couple places, but specifically the Texas cities, because again, I'm from Texas, yeah. but we aren't going to my hometown, which is Houston, but we are going like in the surrounding areas. So we'll be in like Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio. Really excited about those three places um, because I'll have family, I have family and friends there, but they will also be driving up. So of course I'm excited to go down South and back to mm -hmm. Texas, but also Baltimore uh, because I'm a DMV resident and uh, I've been here about eight years now. So of course, you know, both of my homes will be represented of sorts. So I'm, I'm really, really excited. Detroit, oddly, is also um, up there, not because it's a hometown of mine, but Motown, right? There's an air about Detroit, you know, when you get there. Um, and so I really want to make sure that we make Detroit proud as, as well. Beautiful. Karis, cities you're excited for on this tour? 
Um, so I'm really excited to explore Boston a lot. I am very excited. Um, I'm also excited for Detroit because <laughs> she tapped right on that. I was like, yes, that's exactly why I want to go to. Let's go. Um, and Thousand Oaks, California. That'll be my first time ever, ever performing in California. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm excited to see the space. So yeah. <laughs> Amari, for you. I'm excited to go to Baltimore because it's so close to home. All my friends and family can see me. And I was gonna say Thousand Oaks, California too, because I've never been to California. So I'm so excited. Never. Oh. Never. Now you so know much. this show is like a Broadway rock concert from the second people walk oh. into the theater. Do you know what's going to happen to all of you when you hit that stage, that very first performance? Like, what are you looking forward to the most? That first performance out with a live audience. Brittany, I'll ask you. The rush, right? The rush of energy. And I think that we're just going to zone out as we should, right? Like, by that point, we will be well prepared for the show. And I think that first note, that first cue right is just we will just zone out and just really get into it so that you know this show is interactive it's about the fan experience it's about the glamour and the 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 love and the legacy and the music of donna summer and so um we will be able to just really really show that um and, and get the crowd involved which makes it even better so i feel like it's just gonna be a big rush karis for you I think that I think it's going to be a very overwhelming experience the first time I hear the audience sing it back at me. I think that that's going to be a huge like it's just going to I'm excited for it, but I'm also like bracing myself for the emotions that are probably going to going to come over um, when that when that happens, because, you know, there's so many songs like Last Dance and, yeah. and on the radio is I'm already ready to hear everyone just on the radio from the audience. I'm just ready for it. <laughs> Amari, for you. I'm excited for people to get up and dance with us. I really love the audience's energy and it really helps me as well, just to feel it that they're having a good time. So I'm really excited for that. I'm gonna have to say, take a couple of deep breaths too, but I'm yeah. so excited. Because <laughs> it's gonna hit you like a wave because you know we haven't had yes. anything in 18 months. Everything's been shut down live and now you're hitting the road with this feel good musical. I mean, you know, you look at, you know, sitting here today, I'm sure you have hundred, you know, 20 different Donna Summer songs that's running through your mind. But as we're sitting here today, one of your favorite Donna Summer songs for each of you, and tell me why it's your favorite song. Anybody can go first. Because I have so many. As you can see, she's sitting behind me. <laughs> Donna Summer. I mean, I have what a is that? I'm obsessed with her. <laughs> okay, well, um, Oh, go okay. ahead, go ahead, Amara. Okay. Amara, you go. Um, well, the first one that I ever came across was Love to Love You, Baby. So that's like my first one just because it got me into it. But my second one is Hot Stuff. Oh, okay. yes. That runs <laughs> one, one beginning to another gamut. That's fabulous. That's a nice book. <laughs> Brittany. Um, I was going to, I mean, I, not only are all the songs awesome, so I know Karen's touched on Last Dance and, you know, all of that, and, and that's oh, so amazing, but I um, I like She Works Hard for the Money, and yes. I, I like it because it's, it's empowering, and um, not only is it empowering, of course, we, where I was really young and hearing that song, but um, to know now, you know, from the show why she made that song. Um, there's this Arab woman, uh, women empowerment in the show, and uh, I, I'm really excited to kind of convey that to the audience. But she works hard for the money. Is a bad, mm -hmm. you know, awesome empowerment woman anthem, and I'm so ready for the empowerment piece of it. So definitely, she works hard for the money. Beautiful, Karis, for you. <sighs> <laughs> um, I think. I'm I'm very excited to sing MacArthur Park. I am beyond I am beyond excited to sing that one. First and foremost, because it starts off with um with disco singing it. And she's and first of all, the song has beautiful imagery, first and foremost. Yeah. But it starts off with me singing, and then towards the end, all three of us are singing it. And then it's just we all are connecting with with her life at once, and we get a few moments to do that. But when we when we get to do it during MacArthur Park, which just happens to be one of my favorite songs, it's just it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling to get to sing that. And then Last Dance, because who doesn't love Last Dance? <laughs> that is great. You know, the three of you are going to be inspirations for so many young girls 
who are going to the theater for the very first time and they're going to be, oh my God, she looks like me. I can do that. Who were your inspirations, either theatrically or a teacher, who gave you that 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 push and said, you can be something in this business. You have talent. Any of you can go first because we all have those in our life and you're going to inspire so many people on this tour. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Okay, so my first acting teacher was a black woman named Miss Sharon Cook, and she really inspired me. It was the first acting classes I had ever had, and she still encourages me to this day. So shout out to her. I really love her. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh gosh, um, there's there's so many people, which is a great thing. Um, yeah. I also want to shout out a, an acting coach. Um, her name was Karen Gourmet, and when I was a, a kid going to performing arts school on the weekends. Um, she was the one that kind of saw these different abilities and I was just kind of going to act. And she's like, nope, you should sing, you should dance. Um, she's actually the reason I got my very first agent. Um, and so she really pushed me, um, you know, to just do great things and to, to keep going when I was like seven years old. So definitely Karen Gorman. Beautiful. Karis, for you. Um, I have quite a few, but I'm, I'm going to say the one that screams to me the most. Um, uh, she passed on now, but Norma Miller was one of my biggest inspirations. For a couple of years, I got to work with her and learn swing dance. And it was fantastic because she originated in Hell's a Poppin'. And, like, you, you know, and um, she always told me, just remember to swing out. And it wasn't just about dance. It was about life. And it was about going for it and seeing what you want and going for it. And just remember to take that leap of faith. And there's just so many things that, like, even with with this opportunity, had I not taken the leap, I would not I would not be here. So, yeah. and now look where you are. You all of you are today. You're getting ready to hit the road in a North yeah. American tour of Donna Summer. So we're just about out of time. But I want to tell all of our audience watching again, Donna, the Donna Summer musical kicks off its North American tour in Utica, New York, on November 23rd. You can uh, you can see when the show is playing in your city by visiting the official website, which is the Donna Summer Musical dot com. Ladies, I have had such a wonderful time with you all today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, wonderful time with you. <laughs> Listen, have a very great time on the road. I will catch you in one city or another. Everybody go to the Donna Summer Musical dot com website to find out where we'll be playing in your city. And for all your theater news, go no further than Broadwayworld.com. Stay safe, everyone. Good to see you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>